thing of beauty, ain't it? You dang right it is. You dang right it is, guys. And uh, tomorrow is the 4th of July. And I just wanted to start this video with a happy 4th of July to you folks. And uh, I hope you get a day off work or something. Maybe a day or two. I hope you get to enjoy it with your loved ones. And I also wanted to say thank you guys for the people who supported us on our 4th of July shirts right here. Now, I had a lot of people message and upset, guys. They didn't get one and they want me to reprint some. Well, the issue is... Uh, I said that was a limited edition, so if I repent, reprint them, I'm a liar. However, if you're fast enough this time, you can have a chance to get another limited edition shirt. <laughs> Who wants to get buck nasty? Speaking of damn beautiful America, look at that wagon right there. That wagon is kind of like America, okay? A little rough around the edges, but you know what? Mess around and find out. Try us. Actually, that Ford that just drove by on six cylinders, even though it's supposed to be running on eight with a big old exhaust like towing some cows, that represents America. Now that represents Pike County. I mean, shoot, last week we had this thing just running on six out of eight. Yeah. Now I can tell you what is firing on all eight cylinders. How good this shirt looks. That's right, right here. We got the Puddins Fab Shop Sunday Model A. And then we put a Hot Rods Classic line on there from that video. Is that from the 80s? That right there is a picture we took that day that we did that Will It Run. That right there is one of my favorite days, one of the best days I've had in I don't know how long of a time. Uh, a lot of good friends is working on a Hot Rod. I wanted to put that moment on a t-shirt. It's got the old school logo on the front. Actually, we did this logo for the front of this shirt, and then we ended up using the old school looking logo, old timey, I mean, looking logo for the front of this one as well. These right here are limited edition, guys. I tell people that, and they're like, well, maybe I shouldn't have waited till this day or that day, guys. I don't have control on how fast they sell. I, I'm just tell you, telling you, there's people out there and they don't mess around, okay? They hop on it, they, they sell quick. Now up next, we got the Puddins Handyman Services. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I cannot look at this shirt without laughing because we're missing a finger. Three out of five ain't bad, you know. Most y'all probably didn't even realize I was a handyman, but around here I'm the handy of the handiest. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, we've got the Puddins Fab Shop Dancing King Trading Card. Yeah, you're dang right. I think that is awesome right there. That's something we've been working on for a minute. Flip her around, we got the crown on the front with the hearts on there as well. <laughs> Never thought I'd see me as a playing card, but by golly, here it is. I'm gonna slap this one on and I elected to go sleeveless because if this wagon don't cooperate, I'm gonna get my claw hammer after it. We appreciate all the support and the merchandise. Uh, it keeps me and my family busy. It keeps us grinding. It keeps us hungry and pushing. And we have just, I, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, these shirts, I don't think we're gonna print any of them again. So all three of them, once they're gone, they're gone. Maybe the next round of shirts, we'll, we'll, we'll look at bringing back some of the classics. Or maybe not. Maybe I got a couple more tricks up my sleeve that ain't there. You want good quality Puddin's Fab Shop merchandise that is exclusively available at PuddinsFabShop.com. And if you want chattering valves or rockers, they're exclusively available at uh, the small block Chevy in this wagon. So last week we got this thing back from the exhaust shop. We did some tuning on it. Found out we were only running on uh, six cylinders probably part of the time. For sure, no more than seven cylinders because that one spark, pla uh, spark plug gap was completely closed. We still managed to get her tuned out pretty good, timing, carburetor, all that kind of stuff happy. Uh, but in the end, there was still some chattering going on. Well, I tried to adjust on them and it was my first time trying to do a little fill kind of test when it was hot. I burnt the crap out of my hands. And when I got done, it was chattering worse than when I started. When you crank it up, sometimes you do hear really distinctive like, tap, 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 like a lifter, and then that'll go away, but then there's still chatter. So I don't know if we do have a bad lifter. I don't know, honestly, enough about them. Usually I put good running engines in my vehicles, like most of my projects. So I ain't really ever had to tear into that kind of crap on a small block Chevy. So of course I'm hoping we can adjust on them and doing that, the noise goes away and we're GUD, we're good to go. 
However, I'm not convinced anything until we get into this thing and really see what's going on. Now somewhere around here, I should have some chrome valve covers that we oversprayed the dog piss out of. I do not know what I did with them, but if we can find them, we will cut them up and we will be building us some custom valve covers for adjusting valves. Come out and play wherever you are. Hey yo, I knew I'd find them. The suckers are still gasketed up, perfect. I mean, I never cut one of these before, but what if we just kind of come right there and we just follow on the other side of our little chrome indented, our little in indentations here. We go down to roughly in there, you know, just something like that. Oh, a little baffle in there, huh? Well, I know a job for putting handyman services when I see it. Claw hammer. Oh, but what in the little welded baffle do we got here, huh? I need one glove. I'm about to handle that baffle like Michael Jackson and just bait it. Don't you come around here. Another victory for the claw hammer. Now you want to be careful with your edges because those are going to be sharp. On top of that, anywhere where we got little like strands of metal from cutting that, we definitely do not want that falling down into our engine. So I'm going to take our old uh, roll lock here with the little scuffing pad and we're going to do a little edge clean up. I totally smooth out that edge, which is good because we don't want to lose a finger. Be looking like that guy back there. By golly, don't uh, tempt me with dimple dyeing this and welding it back in. We'll have the world's first excessively leaking dimple dyed valve covers. Plop that. Battery must be dead. Here's your friendly tip of the day. Put all your charging stuff on a power surge strip that you can turn on and off or night. Because those things, when you forget batteries on there, like to burn down shops. I used to be really bad about that, but here lately I've been doing good. And I, I haven't even had that strip on in like three weeks and I've been using my stuff quite a bit. And that right there is your Puddin's Fab Shop Safety Tip of the Day. Once you do it so much, it just becomes habit, guys. Oh, that thing's cranking like a six volt starter on 12 volts now. I done had this valve cover on and off so many times, I could do it in my sleep, blindfolded, left-handed, butt naked. Next up, the custom job goes on. And it snakes down in there a lot easier than them tall, thick uh, aluminum ones do. I ain't got no uh, short bolts, so we're just gonna try some custom spacers on these ones. We want to do our best to seal this up because I know some motors don't oil as good as others. Uh, but these suckers right here for this engine, she's an oiling machine. We'll grab our spark plug socket because why not? Make sure that'll get on there and it does. Just barely too. We're kind of riding the line on that fitting. And do not fear, I've got a plan for the bottom here. Usually I have Gorilla Tape right here. I got some T-Rex tape. This stuff don't play no games. So I figure if we run a strip of it, it'll stick pretty good to that chrome. And maybe it'll be a little extra splash guard. Judge how much I need it over there because it's a valve cover too. I'm a pretty fart smeller. We're gonna do this one kind of the same way. Uh, I did offset a little bit to see if that helps. And I get to pull that one back off because I realized I never wiped that out or brake cleaned it out or anything after cutting that. Good thing we pulled that off there. She is a little dirt A Little bit may have fell down in there. Don't worry about that. It'll be fine. Driver side's done and installed. Passenger side's cleaned up, installed. And I reckon we're ready to let it kind of fire up. Uh, if one's chattering plum crazy, I may turn on it some, but I'd prefer to get this thing warm before we really uh, adjust them out. Fingers crossed, everything goes good here. You may want to plug that big old vacuum leak right there on the front. Try again. And that 
big old vacuum leak. There's absolutely no ticking sound this time, no chattering right now, but we'll see what happens as it warms up. Sounds pretty good idling. Uh, I don't, it don't look like we're losing any oil anywhere. Ain't making an oily mess, so that's good. 50 pounds of oil pressure at idle, and we'll just wait for this uh, temperature to come on up for us. shooting oil now told y'all this thing's an oiling machine i mean i don't care if we make a little mess whenever uh we're adjusting on them but i'd prefer that just not be plum shooting everywhere a little splash or two got on the valve cover too hot and humid to be out here dancing like a fool so it's kind of weird that i mean y'all heard it chatter when i fired it up in the last video and i was like it's making more noise that was the last time i touched this thing so why is it quiet as can be right now i don't know a little more tape on it and she should be warmed up enough now where we can try adjusting guys one number six just fired it up number six uh is still squirting oil out that little slit so another little piece of tape and you hear it ticking there right there the tick went away Then we gave her an extra half turn. They all seem to be adjusting out good. I can start to hear them click run them down half turn back there guys if you're having a hard time getting a half turn do two quarter turns we made it to our very last one except i couldn't get our socket set up down in there well on this side everything was going good until it wasn't we went good they're all set where i want them and just as that oil continues to heat up and get thinner and thinner it just quick quick shoots further and further shoot you already know a little oil here a little oil there never hurt nothing just don't look underneath there and see how much we are really losing a little coat of oil to make everything shiny and pretty You know what they say, if you want to be the best, you got to make an oily mess. Ugh. Boy, if that really was a saying, we'd plumb be kicking ass right now. That would be just about my luck. Uh, very last one to go. And I could not get the socket on it because the valve cover's not cut that way far enough. I'm hoping maybe we can grab that lip and kind of give her a little custom sheet metal job. She don't need much. There we go, that's what we needed right there. What well, about over that shit? <laughs> Took a little speck of oil right to the eyeball. Old lefty's well lubricated. 
splashed right above and just direct hit. There goes Tecumseh's finest. They're rolling too deep. Someone's about to get an ass whipping. I tried to be slick and build some custom valve covers and instead I just got everything underneath the hood slick. But she is adjusted out, guys. She's not clickety clacketing. Uh, doing that method right there makes me feel good about it. Uh, like three different sets of people had their hands on different valves doing it the ways they wanted and not that any of their ways was wrong i just want a baseline of everything being done the same so it's the same one big old mess that's the same driver's side is together and you may notice i have my little vacuum gauge hooked back up to our carburetor it's because we tune this thing with it running on seven cylinders now I, timing's timing, okay? I know I got the timing where I want it, but we also just ran our valves, so I don't think it's gonna hurt nothing to check the carburetor machine here and do a little fine tweaking if need be. I am not cut out to have nice things. Nothing to see here, folks, nothing to see here. All right. Let's tune that old carburetor. Hey, you want to hear the good news or the bad news? Good news is that carburetor's tuned out right about where it needs to be. What's not awesome is firing it up that time. I can hear a ruckus going on on this passenger side again. I'm gonna take a screwdriver, you put it to your ear like that. And we're gonna put it down on there and I'm gonna see if I can tell which one it's coming from. I don't know why I held that at my ear the whole time. To me, it kind of sounded like number eight was the loudest, so I just tried to pull off number eight plug wire to see if it went away. Sometimes if you pull those off there, it will. Uh, she zapped me through my gloves, and then that thing was shooting a freaking spark from there down to here. I pulled all the plug wires off when it was running on this side, and when they all dropped out, I didn't hear a big significant change. So I pulled the valve cover off. I went another quarter turn on each one. That way we got a total of three quarters turn because I know some people say half, some people say three quarter. So I wanted to give it that extra turn on that side. And guys, I can still hear it. <laughs> Michael Jackson glove back on. Valve cover on this side of the engine, uninstalled cardboard dampener installed give a damn factor quickly running out <laughs> no guys i'm gonna fire it up and i'm gonna try to uh like grab on the rockers and go down through there and see if we can tell which one's chattering uh, i'd really like to identify and have an idea of which ones it is causing our our noise or which ones ones with an s on the end plural how many cam lobes did we wipe out <laughs> I didn't hear no chattering that time. Ain't adjusted nothing since last time. The oil's just plumb pouring out the back of the motor. We're damned if we do and damned if we don't on this thing. I'm gonna do what any good person should do, which is slap this valve cover back on, clean my meth, <laughs> meth, not my meth. <laughs> I was trying to say mess, but I did it with a Mike Tyson impression, so I called it a meth. I'm gonna clean my mess for the 100th that's why I confused that 100th time and I'm gonna do what anyone should do which is just run it and it'll get better or it'll get worse jacking it up is helping us drain off the rest of the oil <laughs> this sucker is low enough I had to jack it up here because uh, that low profile unit won't even get underneath that cross member it's car sits too low so at least i did one thing right and since we're just making a mess everywhere 
I thought maybe we could kind of look from the bottom side and see if we could tell where the power steering's leaking. The thing that was leaking last time that we spent half a day trying to make quit leaking. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. That's old chatty Kathy. She likes to chat and chatter. But this right here is old leaking Leroy. So that whole spot right there is a uh, power steering fluid. It's gotta be that, really. Insult to injury gonna drip right in front of me. What is that right there? Some type of hole of some sort. Hmm, interesting. I'm gonna try to get up in there with the borescope. Well, she looks dry to me, best I can tell. You see how it looks really wet right there at that edge or seam or whatever? That's that fitting we were messing with last time. And I'm just assuming once again that that is leaking. My favorite. I dried this off as good as I can get it. So I'll just put eyes on it, say every 15 to 30 minutes. Or maybe we can see exactly where it's coming from. Just for a little verification in this old leaking power steering pump situation. Now, since we're on leak patrol, uh, I looked down here. Last time it looked like our oil pan gasket was leaking, kind of along there was wet and it dripped some. But upon further inspection, uh, looking up here, I can tell 100% that top line, our top fitting up there is leaking. That bottom one may be leaking too. I, I ain't 100% sure on that. And that crap's gotta go somewhere so it would come down this and that may be our leak. Or it may be one of our leaks. Maybe the cooler line's leaking and the pan's leaking, I don't know. I guess we're gonna start one leak at a time here. On my way back out, I stopped here for a little look-see and uh, we already got some fluid right there. Whatever that hole is, uh, that's where our fluid's coming from. It appears a regular old 3 8 bolt will thread into there. A minute ago when I seen it had threads, I was thinking maybe it was some type of other mounting bolt depending on your bracket. Uh, but is that part of the assembly? Is there supposed to be a bolt in there? And when it got remanufactured or produced, whatever, one didn't go in there? I don't know. I know that we didn't take it out of there. Of course, all I have is one inches. I bet one inch is too long. We're not gonna make a joke about that. Nope. Nope. But I know a couple of you just celebrated. <laughs> now I'm gonna slap a couple washers on there. I'm gonna run us a nut down. And uh, that, we cut it right at the end, is about my desired length. Putting a nut on there always helps. It'll help kind of deburr it when you back the nut off. So here's old little stubby wubby. What's up, little shawty? Sorry, I'll never do that again. We're gonna go a few wraps of thread tape on that. I'm gonna try to tighten it down in there. And I don't know if this is gonna fix our leak. Well, it can't get much worse. <laughs> Yep. Next step, these are about to whip me. I don't even think I'm gonna try with that dipstick in. We gotta get it out first. You just call me old stair stepping Stewart. Stair Stewart stepping step. He's getting his butt whooped. Oh, this might be uh, what we need, maybe. It seems too good to be true, it probably is. What in the macadamia nut is going on here? <laughs> this is a 14. Obviously our bolt is not metric, but if it'll go on there and get that damn demon bolt out of there, I'll take it. Would be a great time to be a petite little individual who could just reach his hand down in there. We need a better wrench than this. And if neither one of these get it, well, I'm gonna go get five gallons of gasoline and we're gonna set her ablaze. The wagon's right here on my nerves. It don't wanna get to right here. And it's getting there in an expedited fashion. Just playing, guys. We'll get this bolt one way or another. There we go. That was a good turn. Ugh. No gasoline required. Don't forget, though. This is the easy part. Oh, it's wiggling. Good, because I ain't got no skin left on that knuckle. 
drop and fall, I don't even care. Just as long as it's out of there. Ah. It popped. She came out, may never go back in, but it's out. Take a couple deep breaths. Who care if that bolt just took 25 minutes to get out? I don't care. Hey, yo. Uh, nothing on the bottom this time. That's out of there, but I definitely pulled it right in our way. It's out. So it got our fittings off guys and those washers fit really crappy. Can y'all see me? I looked through all my washers and I didn't have any that were any better. And I've seen some of these adapters, people sell them with O-rings on there like that. In fact, there's a little groove even machined there for an O-ring. The transmission don't look like it's machined for that, but we're kind of out of options right now because I ain't got the proper washers. So maybe we'll try putting one of these in there and I'll just kind of see how it feels. Oh yeah, it's definitely getting snug, but there's still a little gap, so that's got to be our O-ring dragon, which hopefully means it's going to seal. That's snug. Snug. And like I said, I don't know if that was our only leak on that thing, but this washer right here is the one that I think was leaking, and you can see how Maybe you can, maybe you can't. She's pretty bent. I clean up our little uh, boot, whatever. What do you call that? Just shove her down in. That's gotta be in place first. Oh, <laughs> way the hell. Kinda went down there like it wanted to. Man, oh man, maybe my luck's starting to change here. Cause we pert near hit that sucker. Oh yeah, she's starting right there. She sure is. Her luck ain't changing. That's more power steering fluid right there. Yep, that fitting's still leaking. Of course it's still leaking. Why would it not be leaking? You thought you sealed it up or something? Yeah. That ain't sealing up today, cowboy. Uh, that shoved down into something though. We'll worry about that uh, bolt later. That should be good enough to run it. Got us some more uh, zinc here. Let her run a little bit. I don't want everything to get super hot on me down here. Uh, I don't see any fluid, guys. That top one before, I mean, it had enough. It was pink around it. She's a little blinky pinky. I think we may have fixed that one. One problem out of three ain't bad. You better get out of there if I start that, because this thing's got enough oil to water the lawn. Quiet again. Put it together. Right. It'll clear itself up. Yeah. Yeah. Or it'll get worse. Yep. Yeah. It gets worse when you find what it is. Someone's got to be a looker though. Slapped our valve cover back on. Tube. Plug that sucker. Uh, me and Uncle Rick were in agreement. Just uh, put some miles on her and let's see what happens. See if she clears herself up. They said if there's a piece of trash in that lifter and it's letting it bleed off some, that that could explain the it coming and going. He knows a lot more about this kind of stuff than I do. Now, Rick, I'll still out fabri fabricate you, so don't even try me. But anyhow, the plan is to get back on this thing in the morning. I've been at it all day. It's like five something already, just melting away. And the hot rod's ready to play some more tennis. So by golly, we're gonna play some tennis. Did you lose the ball? Yep. I know I shouldn't wear that handyman shirt. Not yesterday, the day before I had on the handyman shirt. Well, guess what decided to start messing up about midnight that night? Our air conditioning. 
the blower, the, the fan in particular. I got in there and push started it and it went till about 4.30 in the morning. And then, uh, yeah, she was not happy. And it was not the capacitor, it was the blower motor. That sucker was uh, plum pissed. Very unhappy. Long story short, I got to spend the first half of the day yesterday getting my air conditioning fixed. That way them girls don't burn up in that house. And I didn't even get to hit on anything with my claw hammer. Luckily, I didn't lose that finger in that blower motor when I was push starting it. And then, on top of that, about two months ago, y'all know we're building a house. Me and my wife drove like an hour away to this tile place where we spent like three hours picking out all these tiles for every tile situation you could think of in that house. And we're to the point to order our tile, so we call up there and guess what they lost? The whole list, every bit of it. So guess what we got to do again? We got to drive over an hour away again to pick out crap again. What I'm saying is I worked half the day I basically drove around and talked to people the second half of the day. I'm officially a certified handyman. And back to our wagon. I want to drive this thing today. And there's a few things we need to try to do before we drive it. Power steering lake. Power steering pump should be here sometime this morning. Our tires are rubbing. We need a return spring. I want to put eyes on the tie rods. And Uncle Rick said he heard some kind of brake noise one day when I hit the brakes. He said something on the front almost sounded like it shifted or clunked a little bit, which is weird because I've never heard, heard or felt anything. So we'll probably just pull off the tires and do a quick little inspection. And the same thing with our tie rods. I think I tightened them up, uh, but I want to make sure they're all tightened down and clamped ready to go. <clears throat> Nothing on our pads look funky. I'll go ahead and check torque on our caliper bolts they're both tight kind of try to wiggle on that there ain't no play in that i don't see anything over here that concerns me other than the quart of oil on our upper a arm you know but don't worry about that nice little gloss finish oh see that turning that sucker ain't i good thing we checked them Hmm. Looks to me like we're gonna have to separate this. Uh, our threads are underneath our clamp, but they don't go all the way back behind our clamp. So this one over here, the threads are plumb run in here. So in theory, if we ran this one back in, that'll, and then we run this one out, and we get her about the same length, uh, that'll give, give us better clamping situation here. Y'all didn't think I was going to get the claw hammer out for this? After a little smacky smack, that'll drop out. So I kind of just eagle-eyed this whenever I put the front end together as far as getting it straight. But when I did do my little test drive the other day, uh, it drove down the road really good. So I know we're pretty close. So I just want a measurement of the overall length to have an idea of what to put it back to about 18 and a half maybe 18 9 16 we ain't gonna get too picky here at the alignment shop so our outside one is our left hand threads so we're gonna spin her left and spin her in right there i got about three or four threads sticking behind our clamp now and then this side we're gonna unthread it spins really good because there's a lot of oil on it in fact, I don't think there's anything on this car that don't have some type of fluid on it. And I ran that out. Now we need to check her for length. And I actually ran it out way too far. So I'll just run this side in a little more. It's pretty close right there. I'm going to give her one more full turn. That's money. So now we slap her back together and hopefully this time if we, when we clamp it down, it clamps. Ah. That sucker ain't spinning no more, is it? That makes me happy. I damn sure don't want to be doing a buck 20 down the highway and lose a tie rod. Now, after you get her tightened back up, just straighten your co cotter pin out with your claw hammer. Reuse that sucker. 
D-U-N. She's done. Passenger side, I did the same thing. It was tight. I couldn't spin it, but on the one, I couldn't see thread, so I still adjusted it over. And our bottom caliper bolt, I got a little turn on that, but it was snug enough that it shouldn't have been letting anything pop or whatever. So I don't know. So our new pair of steering pump came in. That's our bolt that was leaking. Uh, I see up here, there's another bolt hole. Ooh, and the threads in that thing do not look very happy. But just the same, I don't know if we could leak out of there. Ours does not look like it's been leaking. And it may not be leaking, but we're gonna cut up another stubby, tape it up and put it in there just because. I looked at the bottom of this and it's been leaking again and I looked on the back of here and I didn't see any, so I still think our little fitting adapter is leaking and we're gonna pull it out next. Yeah. You know, because now's a great time to use a drain pan. So here's our piece. At least the drain pan did a good job here. And here's the problems with the ones out of these pumps. Uh, you see how that started? Uh, less than, probably right at a quarter thread is all we get before it's snug. If we try to tighten that down, we're gonna rip the threads of this nut. That was the problem with the first one. That's gonna be the problem with this one. Now this one here that I had in stock myself has a much deeper uh, little piece here. I do notice that this uh, O-ring's moving a little bit on here. So we'll pop that o-ring off we'll pop the o-ring off this one that we just took out the new pump and we'll slap it on our piece and i'll be honest guys if this don't fix it we're just gonna have to find somewhere to buy some more of these we'll be to the point we gotta find somewhere to just buy some more of these try a new line something Now earlier I told you guys I went back and adjusted that side additional quarter inch turn. Uh, so I just want to get this side caught up to the performance side of things. Okay, we're going to give her the quarter to turn as well. Out that way both sides are matching. With any luck, we won't be taking that valve cover back off anytime soon. But I ain't exactly been lucky lately, have I? Next we're going to look at our uh, return spring situation here. Bought this little bracket, come with them two springs. Bolted up right there like it is meant to be, but them springs are plumb stretched out. It may just be me, because I got the best glasses around, but that sure looks a lot better without that on the front. So, what can we do? Well, let's try to move it to the back. Had a little dirt dauber action there, did y'all see that? So let's look at how this is set up. When you're giving her gas, it pulls that way, and then when it returns, it goes that way. So if we added something off of this, that this could hook to, and then maybe right back here off of this, we had something stick out that it could hook to over there. Then that would be uh, whoop, pulling it the correct way. So maybe we can cut this, continue it on, and clean it up and reuse this piece. Nice little straight edge. Nice little sloppy line there. We can round it off however need be. Definitely should have marked this on this side. But hell, that's all right. I like doing stuff on this wagon at least two or three times. Clean her up real quick. That side we got the brushed finish. Now either way, that'll look good. You won't even see it back there. Get her bolt out. Put her new custom washer on. Right back on she goes. Let's see here if we hook that right there. 
and we just kind of want to eyeball where we think we want that i don't think we need to be all the way to our pivot just forward of it i don't know maybe three eighths of an inch or so pull our cotter pin on this side our nylock on this side we're ready to add a tab or something to this and because this piece spins so good and that's adjusted to where we want it just gonna put a piece of tape there keep it from doing some spinning and we ain't got an old scrap cabinet in a minute i think that's some 5 16ths right there the hell was i trying to build a custom sissy bar or something i don't know whatever i was doing it didn't turn out good She's a little hot potato. Oh, don't burn to my rag. Ain't fired up the old wheeler in a minute. I did kind of bevel that, by the way, where there's somewhere for the weld to go. I'm gonna check it real quick. Definitely could go back just a hair. Good enough for my wife. Going for one more mock up. We can drill our hole about right in there. Mark that with your spring loaded punchy punch. We'll go out past that just a little bit, lop her off. It'll clean up and she'll be ready for some paint again. Next up's my favorite part. We gotta get this paint can ready. She's ready. This son of a buck's gonna explode one day. You take her for a ride on that shaker and that paint lays down like it's ready for a SEMA car show. Like SEMA, SEMA quality paint job right there. Probably quite literally SEMA quality. Don't they spray paint stuff? Oh no, they leave like dry shafts missing and nuts and bolts missing. That's what they do. Damn! Well, as I went to put that wheel back on there, I thought to myself, you should shake that to see if you get any slop. I mean, you probably can't, it ain't gonna clunk or nothing, you can't hear it, but I can feel just a little bit that that, uh, that we're shifting. Ah, so we'll get it popped. Pull the cotter pin. So we take it to the next hole, maybe spin her a time or two, shake on it. Can't feel that little feeling I was feeling. You feel me? <laughs> and slap her back together. And guys, we just, we'll have to keep an eye on this. Like I said, everything being new, I wouldn't be surprised that after we drive it a little bit more, maybe we check it and we got to do it a little more. You definitely always want to use your claw hammer to install your dust caps. That's what these were actually designed to do. Now that was definitely enough time for a little piece here to dry. Now don't tell Mortsky that that nylock is just basically flush. If, if he figures out and he finds out there ain't two protruding threads, he's going to lose his damn mind. I'm going to pay for him to get a breathing treatment. That way he can woo saw and calm down. Damn grumpy old man. Put that on. And we can take that right there and hook it on. We do have a little adjustment by loosening that, taking it forward. Shove her forward just like so. Tighten her back down. Look at that with the breather on. That whole assembly for our throttle, TV cable, and return springs all back there kind of hidden. Looks way better than having that trampoline spring stretched across there. Our fender well in here is just dusty and dirty and it's rubbing just enough to get some dust and dirt on it. Uh, this side looks like it's probably 
rubbing a little more aggressive. Be aggressive. Be -e aggressive. Oh yeah, I forget, if you go too far, it gets up into our quarter. Right here, we've got a triple jack in situation going on. Three jacks, one wagon. Well, I got them in there somehow, I promise you that. There, that's all you need. Three jacks, one jack stand and a big old spacer. And you too can change a flat on the side of the road, quick and easy. Here at Puddin's Cleaning Services, if you see me come out the closet with my broom, never mind, never mind. Here at Puddin's Cleaning Services, if you've got a nice patina and your old car will sweep you off your feet. All right, so looking up in here, looks like we got some undercoating right there. That's where we were mainly rubbing. Did a little there. I can see through there where it speckled some, maybe a little right there and right there. Like I said, I can tell it's nothing that's gonna tear up our tire. Uh, but as we go to pull in and out of places and you're turning and on ramps and stuff like that, when you get body roll out of this, uh, all of that's gonna become even more of a problem. So maybe we chip around at that and see how thick it is. Not super thick, only about an eighth inch thick, it looks like. That'll clear out a little bit. And we may have made a mess and found a little more rust. But I've seen that panel in there move quite a bit over. So we knocked off the undercoating, moving over. We may have quarter inch, if not more clearance now. I really don't know. I know that hammer was moving metal. Uh, now our outside guys, that's not what we were hammering on. That's an inner fender well. So all this is perfectly fine. Now I want to look at one last thing here. We've got this lip that's pretty sharp. And it kind of just makes getting our tire on and off kind of a pain. So I'm curious if we can take our locking pliers and bend that up. It'd work if we had them ones for doing flanges, but we don't. So maybe we can do what we can just with our pliers. I know some of y'all's gonna say do the ba uh, baseball trick, but guys, I can barely get this tire on and off with it lifted four foot in the air much less trying to squeeze a baseball bat in there. Yeah, it's working some. It may not look like much, but it is. Out here looks perfectly fine. And underneath there, that sharp edge that used to hang out here is gone and she's folded up. Give us a little peace of mind and should be a little easier get that tire on and off. I'll tell you what though, uh, before on this lip, I could barely even slide a fingertip through there. And uh, we got some wiggle room now. And even up there on that little edge, I don't know if y'all remember the little edge in there, that's gonna be our next little tricky spot. But right there, I can actually get my fingertip in. So we're gonna try our luck with that. Now this side we were rubbing a little worse, but uh, like I said, that may just be cause that undercoating is super thick right there. Oh yeah, I like that. Oh, fatty went right back on. And when we got her jacked up in the air here, I'm gonna get this old license plate off.
this is kind of bent we may straighten on it that's folded up did someone she may have had a hitch on her at one point now this old license plate sometimes you know i'd clean them up and autograph them and sell them this one here uh, i'll try to autograph it maybe she's a little rusty and crusty it may not take a sharpie well uh, but what i'm gonna do is put it in our merch building and any of the orders after today's video with the new releases uh, we're gonna throw this in with one random order as long as the order has a t-shirt uh, because this will fit with a t-shirt oh yeah she'll take a signature maybe it's just me but i love how this stuff smells if you end up winning this thing send me an email with a picture of it with whatever you do with it strike a nice pose with it i don't think we're gonna rub whoa okay over here uh i can run my whole hand through and right there i can barely shove a fingertip in that one came right loose that's the lefty lucy so this one should be righty lucy oh there it went it was just really damn tight that right there is right at an eighth inch get my fingers in now towards the back's a little tighter but i can still get in there this side i could damn near play patty cake with get my fingers in there yeah that's it right there so what i'm gonna do is lock it down right here and we're gonna run it and it's gonna work or it ain't i'm gonna slap just a little bit of thread tape on that I ain't never had to do this before, but I do think it was leaking. That's what I get for cleaning them threads. I got them too clean. It never tightened up until it ran out of threads. So, uh, yeah, fluid was working its way around the threads and then out the back. We'll grab our battery out the Yeehaw. I cleaned out all the interior pieces. We want to do some driving, and as much as I like starting it from out here, uh, popping the hood every time, if we could rig up some wiring temporarily inside, well, that'd be a lot better. So that's what we're going to do. Nothing fancy. That goes on our HEI, and we can run it right in there. Then for our starter, I'm going to rig us up a red wire here, put a little alligator clip on there. That wasn't the easiest thing I've done in a while. Got her on there, zip tighter wire. Trying to keep that clip from bouncing around, arcing on the main stud. So I'm gonna take our two white ones and strip them enough where we can twist them together like so. That way the coil stays hot. Then you take that and touch it. And uh, that's gonna be how we crank it. Man, she should be hot now. Coil's hot, going live. off and you're good to go we made it to our first stop sure does fire up nice next we better go get us some gasoline we're 
treat her to some real nice ethanol free fuel now uh, i still ain't got a gas cap for this thing so i filled her up about halfway no glove no love all right we're ready to go uh i'd really like to try this thing on the highway i'm thinking about swinging by and seeing if bill's home i bet he'd like to go for a cruise i knew you couldn't resist a good cruise oh, especially in this I was worried about that. Why was it making that screeching noise? What was because it? my temporarily rigged up wire flipped over and got on the hot uh, for my starter. So the starter engaged when we were going. That's what I was gonna say. It sounded like the starter was stuck. That's always good for it, you know? Maybe there's a tooth or three left. <laughs> <laughs> the real problem now is to get that on there, you gotta be right by the exhaust. And uh, that is most definitely a nice and hot exhaust. Dude, that sounded like a turbo jet. And I was going, what the hell could make a whine like that? Did you hear it hissing and screaming? Yeah. That's because that starter was plumb holding on for dear life in there. Surprised we didn't shell the damn thing. It's, I was going to say, it's still on there. I had it zip tied and kind of pulled tight, tight, thinking it wouldn't. But uh, when you make as much horsepower as we're making here, building the was, gas on it. It was running pretty good. <laughs> it was dry. running good until the starter decided to play. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, holy <laughs> shit. I'm just gonna hit it with that thing. Yeah, screwdriver may be a little easier to work in there. I appreciate it, man. Guys, I didn't go into panic mode, but I was like, what is going on? It didn't make sense to me, and then it clicked in my head. Uh, I don't know how we got teeth left on it, and I don't know how uh, the starter's still happy, but it is. Could smell some burning rubber so i just wanted to put eyeballs on her tires i think she's ready to go bill I do too. chatter or ticking or tapping mm -mm. 
No tickety tickety or tappity tappity. It's driving and running so good, I'm happity happity. from outside sitting on his front porch well what do you think about that ray i like it pretty cool huh it don't look a lot different so it's about as low except before it's just buried in the ground yeah, but except the wheel, <laughs> wheels were halfway down in the ground and the steelies are just painted black instead of rusty i like that you did a nice job on that thank you sir Glad to see it. you want to go up and down the block Absolutely. real quick You think we made Mr. Horsepower yes, proud? Yes, sir. You made him proud. I don't know. He may need a little more of a camshaft to make him proud, huh? Ah, he's got a long ride now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ray was just, you know, happy as could be, guys. So I told him I got this idea. I'm working on a full build video for this where we're going to compress all the footage from start to finish. From the time we drug it out here to it being done with interior and everything. And when it gets to that point, uh, I'm going to come pick Ray up. I'm going to we're gonna cruise up to like Route 66 to a place called Pops, go have some lunch or something. And that'll be the ending of the full build video. And uh, he said he's more than willing to make that trip. And I said, well, it'd be nice to take you in it when it's nice. And Ray ain't too picky. He said he had fun riding in it as is. See you, Bill. All right, see you later. Thanks for co-piloting. Well, we made it. I looked down here on the bottom side and there was a little bit of power steering fluid so I think she's just barely seeping. Just enough to drive me crazy because little leaks like that just drive me crazy. Either one of her starter bolts broke. As much as I can see on the flex plate everything looks happy all the way around. I'm glad that starter held on. Sure brought my flashlight but we uh, definitely fixed our transmission leak. Pan is definitely not leaking like I was worried about. It was it running down and on the front. I don't think it was rubbing anymore. Well, this side was a little bit though, I see. <sighs> All right, guys, that's it. I sat down yesterday, did that big old yawn, and I looked at my phone and I didn't realize it was already five o'clock. I got up at five o'clock to start editing, and I'm getting, guys, I, I can't push as hard as I used to. Now I'm only good for like 12 to 13 hour days before I was good for like 17 to 18 hour days. I'm getting soft here, getting weak. Just old has been. <laughs> Our drive went really good. I was really happy with how everything went. Uh, one thing I don't think I pointed out was when we were at Ray's sitting at left there and idle, uh, the temperature did creep up. And when it started getting north of 210, I was like, let's get on the road. As soon as we got on the road, uh, right back down to 190 just instantly. Uh, she may be a little low, not much if so. So we probably need to put a little in there, uh, but we may. Now I've always heard, or I've heard before, you want your fan about halfway in your shroud, which that's exactly how this one landed. Uh, but on the back side, you can feel this fan move a lot of air. On the front side, I wasn't feeling a draft so much. So we need to get that fan moving some more air across that radiator, obviously, because when you're going down the road, it, it works beautifully. Our one tire is rubbing. We probably just need to adjust on the pan hard bar, shove it that way, just a frog hair. And I was not planning on being an air conditioning man uh, two days ago. 
and losing that half a day. And I also wasn't planning on having to go pick out tiles again and losing that second half a day. So that one day I lost this week was supposed to be for finishing up little loose ends on this thing like we've been doing. And even possibly I was gonna try to tackle uh, getting all the factory wiring hooked up and stuff working on it. In the end, we had a pretty successful drive. Uh, I, we still got to put miles on it to see what that lifter is going to end up doing. If we're going to end up making more noise, if we get rid of noise, you know, who knows. She felt good going down the road. She steered good. She stopped good. She felt plenty powerful giving her some gas. She drove good. She rode good and uh, she hauled a little ass. And all in all, we had a pretty good 50 mile drive except for me trying to turn a starter into a supercharger. Model A shirts on the website. Mighty fine looking. Limited edition. My oh my. That's like the perfect spot right there. Model A shirts, Model A stickers, handyman, and playing card. All available at the puddingsfabshop.com and we thank you guys who choose to support us like that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you liked getting to see the wagon go up and down the road. Uh, getting to take Ray for a quick ride was pretty cool. Uh, he seemed pretty happy about it. And uh, I will see you guys next time. We still got a little bit to do to this thing. But don't all projects always need just a little bit? Uh, that's it. Do not forget, guys. Sitting on your ass won't finish your project.